why would I buy comics from that store with that old, tired website? Because you can get great comics like these. Hey there, today I have an unboxing video, and in this video I'm going to open up an order that I placed with Mile High Comics. This was an order I placed on New Year's Eve of 2022. I was not invited to any of the speculator or influencer parties, so I spent my evening apparently shopping for comic books online. Not embarrassed by that at all, because I do believe that in this order I've got some really fun and interesting books to go through. And there's always this sort of, uh, I don't know, just ongoing joke or commentary around Mile High Comics in general. The website induces headaches or nausea or both, difficult to navigate, prices are too high. And I, I will tell you that while I don't necessarily disagree, you have to find a way to work around it because still there are a lot of great deals to be had. And a lot of times it's really around availability. I think that that's something that not a lot of people talk about. And I've researched a lot of the history of Chuck and Mile High Comics, not necessarily studied him per se, but I'm definitely aware of his philosophy in terms of running his store, collecting, buying collections, and things like that. So I try and take that knowledge and use it to my advantage, meaning if there is a book that, let's say, pops, where it's really kind of a book that comes out of nowhere. And I would say that a recent example is the Hypno Hustler character that came up in Spectacular Spider-Man. I remember when the news broke that that character was going to potentially get its own movie from Sony or star in some Sony Spider-Man related property thing. I went to Mile High Comics that morning and saw that it was in stock and I decided not to buy it and later that afternoon when I went back and I saw that oh all of a sudden here comes the comic book speculator influencer app hype machine that's here we go it's, in, it's on all the top 10 lists uh, later in the afternoon the book was gone now you could make the same argument that eBay is the same way where there are books just littered across eBay that, you know, or dollar bin books that people don't care about. And if you're able to jump on right away and grab it, I think that I would have to agree with that side of the argument in, in terms of having quantity and, and availability for certain comic books. But there is something about the whole speculation character announcement or title announcement and like who is in the know and who has information. And I think that the people that have this information are often going to eBay because they just think that's the only place to really get comics or that's the cheapest way, right? They can they can get this book for three bucks before the news breaks because they've got some sort of inside source or information or they work at Marvel or Sony, who knows. But I also think too, if you don't know what you're doing and you're just buying random comics off of eBay, hoping a character pops, those sorts of books, you know, I know it's random, it's hard to say, but it's hard for me to believe that there's just going to be nine eights kind of lying around on eBay. And over time, the average grade that comes back from mile high, plus maybe an opportunity to clean and press a book, it's just too strong. It's too strong of an opportunity. And I also use mile high as like a backup plan source. And what I mean by backup plan is if everyone is running to eBay and they're trying to get the book for three or five bucks, but there it is on Mile High Comics for 20 or 25, I don't necessarily mind paying it because number one, I'm now seeing that there is additional value being put into the book. So those folks that bought the book for three, five bucks and they're trying to flip it, they're now relisting it for 20 or 25 and you're starting to see the sales pick up. So then the actual price after the coupon, and I'll get to that in a second, is almost in line with fair market value. Plus, I do believe you have a better chance buying the book sight unseen from Mile High Comics to get it in a decent grade. Is it going to be a 9.8 candidate? I don't know. Is it going to be a 9.4 candidate? Probably. You know, there's no guarantee, but you're really looking at somewhere between the 9 and the 9.6. And I have had books come back from CGC that I purchased at Mile High in a 9.8 
So it is possible. But I think what's a sure thing for me is that I'm going to get the book in high grade, and it's just a matter of how much do I want to pay. So I want to get to the unboxing, but the last couple of points that I have around Mile High Comics is, number one, I don't use the website. I use the website to make purchases, but I don't use the website to continually go back and search. When I'm on Mile High and I find a title or books that I want, I copy that information into spreadsheets. That way I'm able to ver find the books again very, very quickly. I can just open the sheet, control F, Amazing Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man, the books that I purchased in this order, and I'm able to do sorting and, and massage the data in a way that makes more sense, that it's a little bit more easier for me to navigate. And then once I'm done with my analysis and I know which books I wanna buy, then I go back to the website, find the book again, add it to my cart, and I check out. And it still baffles me too that people aren't aware of the coupon. This is not a commercial for Mile High Comics, but I'm just telling you on the homepage, there's always a coupon code. It has been 60% for the most part for the last couple of years. It will dip down into 50%. And I know even before that, maybe it would even get as low as 40%. And my advice there is just, if it's not 60%, wait for it because it will come back. Uh, Chuck, uh, I, I would say he's very reactive, not necessarily overreactive, but he's very reactive to market conditions. And when he has bills to pay, the coupon goes right back to 60%. So a lot of times what I'll do is as I'm kind of putting together what would be a potential order or I'm evaluating a new title and trying to run numbers, if he has changed the coupon to 40 or 50%, I just sort of I place my order offline, meaning I just create like a little cheat sheet, a, a list of books that I want to buy. And then as soon as I get that Mile High Comics newsletter that says the coupon's been restored to 60% because of uh, the new year, the holidays, or property tax bills that he has to pay, then I know exactly what books to buy. Now, this order is an example of one of those scenarios. The coupon went back up to 60%. I used, I think it was Happy New Year. It changes all the time, so you have to check the homepage. So let me open this order. I want to show you the books that I picked up from Mile High. And I also want to check the conditions on these just to make sure that the conditions are consistent with what I would expect. All right, here is that order from Mile High Comics that I placed on December 31st, 2022. I'm about to open it up. Uh, it came shipped in this FedEx envelope. I always choose FedEx when I check out. You have the option. I think it defaults to USPS. You always want to check FedEx once you get above that free shipping threshold. It's no additional charge. I use it every time and it has not failed me yet. Knock on wood. So here we go. Let's get this opened up. All right. Ridiculously fast unboxing. I could unbox those blind. Uh, I love the consistency with how they put that together. And that... That Gemini Mailer-like cardboard shipping contraption thing, uh, the one that they use, it's not Gemini branded, but it is super sturdy and strong. I don't really have to sweat comics being damaged in transit sort of thing like I do from other online stores. It's super consistent, and it is time to go through these great comics and see what I got. So here we go. The first book is Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur number 32. This was something I noticed that they added to their in-stock inventory, and it just caught my eye. I just was like, I saw Moon Girl 32, and I was like, wait a minute, isn't there something about that book? And it is. It is the first appearance of Princess Fisk. So there she is on the cover. So this is a fantastic book because it is the first appearance of her, the daughter of Wilson Fisk, the kingpin, and there she is also on the cover. And it includes a bonus activity page. Coloring is fun. I was not aware the coloring was fun, so even better. But we have the Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur animated series coming out. And not a ton of information about it. Uh, it's, it's possible that this character, Princess Fisk, could be in it. And if she is in it, this book is going to pop. And this book was speculated on heavily. And I fell for it. I looked at this book back in 2019, trying to pick it up. I missed it, couldn't find it. And then lo and behold, it got added to the Mile High Comics inventory. And I think a lot of the hype and speculation on this book and this character has really kind of fallen off. And I'm happy to grab it. Uh, I have another theory with 
sort of newer books, uh, modern books from Mile High, that they have a better chance of being a 9-8 than your other typical bronze, copper, age type back issues that I normally buy do. And this one, to me, it looks like there is a bit of a stack increase right in here. You can see the line right right on the edge. But the, the corners and everything look good. I mean, it has it's probably somewhere around like a 9-6 with a... Uh, pressed uh, in, up into a 9-8 candidate. So very, very cool. Very happy to add this one. Next up is Fantastic Four 204. It's a great just action-packed cover by Al Milgram. And there's a lot of interesting first appearances in this book. We have the first appearance of Queen Adora, the prime commandant of the Nova Corps. And you also have the first appearance of Tanak Vault, who became the Commander Nova Prime after Richard Ryder returned to Earth. Now, why are those characters significant? I'd never heard of them. Maybe you've never heard of them. To me, it has ties to Guardians of the Galaxy. It has ties to Nova, whether it's Richard Ryder or Sam Alexander. I think there's a lot of uh, rich history with the Kree, the Skrulls, the Nova Corps, and you never know if there's going to be kind of a an ensemble sort of casting that these characters could show up. I'm not really big on speculating on like MCU characters showing up. I'm just speculating on value at this point. And as always, trying to get books in high grade. This book looks amazing. Looks so nice. And I'm going to have to take this out of the bag and board just to be sure here to take a look. But I was looking at the spine through the bag and it looked flawless but let's take a closer look and see again suffering from a bit of a stack increase so that does happen so that would need a little bit of a press but look at this spine just gorgeous slightly miswrapped that's protecting it uh just a couple of non-breaking ticks one right there it's just 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 barely breaks cover but like what is this book at worst a nine six after it's all said and done here's the other thing too especially after ordering books from quality comics the back of this book is clean. I I would say at worst it needs a very, very light dry cleaning. I don't know. Maybe I give it one very, very light wet cleaning. A little bit. It just, as I, as I just sort of move the light back and forth, it just has right there, you can see pretty major, just, it looks like a major crease, but it's a very, very light crease that honestly a quick press and then several days in the cold press and this book would be, I think, an easy, easy 9.6. Vibrant colors. I hadn't opened an order from Mile High in a while. Uh, I had done quite a bit on Atomic Avenue, quite a bit on Hip Comic. And even after these first two issues, I really, really miss ordering from Mile High more frequently. So another great, great book in high grade. Fantastic Four, 204 from 1978. All right, next up we have Daredevil 53. Now this is the Marvel Knights Daredevil run, and these issues were done by David Mack completely. So he did the cover, he did the interiors, did the story, everything. And this issue is special because this is the origin of Echo. And in the comics, part of her origin has to do with her father, Crazy Horse, being murdered by the Kingpin. So more Kingpin-related speculation. We know he's coming back into the MCU. He, he's already back with his couple of appearances in the Hawkeye show from last year, or 2021 now, I should say. And Echo is getting her own show. Again, not a lot of MCU spec here. I'm not saying that her father's going to be a major character. I'm just saying that there's going to be elements of the story that will most likely pull from this particular issue. And just a huge David Mack fan, like... When you think about David Mack, Christian Ward, Alex Maleev, those types of artists with painted covers and just their style, it, it's one of those situations where when you see a David Mack cover, you know it's by David Mack. Just without question, it's so recognizable. And again, just a quick glance at the condition, this being a modern book, you know, something like a little bit of a corner crease right in there is probably what's going to keep it from just being a 9-8 candidate on its own. Pretty much everything from Mile High, you're going to need to consider giving it some sort of press. I think it's just to what degree. Is it a quick press? Is it a deep press? Meaning you may have to go through several times 
along with a very lengthy cold press. Uh, so that's always the question. I, I think you, you have to expect to, if you want the highest grade possible and really maximize the condition, to consider some sort of CPR on the book. But what I like for Mile High Comics is, for the most part, they're going to give you a chance. They're going to give you a real shot. You're not dealing with a lot of uh, premature foxing on books or other stains or dirt. You, you will get those in the, the lower conditions. But I think when they classify a book as near mint, there's certain things just in, turn of the, in terms of like the cleanliness and presentation of the book. And I think that that's how their graders grade is if it looks really dirty, if it looks stained or faded, it immediately drops down into something like a good fine or very fine category. And then maybe a couple of color breaks or creasing would still show up in near mint, but still I'm looking at that sort of nine to nine six range. This at first glance looks to be at least at minimum a nine four nine six candidate. Okay, now we've got a, looks like a couple of books with no backing board. That also happens. Uh, so this one we'll have to check out the condition a little bit uh, closely here. It's kind of odd, like a, it's a flimsy top loader for this. But this is Wonder Woman one eighteen from 1997 with just a gorgeous, beautiful cover by Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. This iteration of Wonder Woman is actually completely done by John Byrne. He wrote, penciled, and inked Wonder Woman for a while around this time period as he made a jump to DC. And just again, giving it kind of a once over, it has probably just a couple of Little ticks, or I don't know what that is right there. It's not quite on the spine. You know, just a quick first assessment. 9496, most likely. There's so many great creators that ended up being on Wonder Woman at one time or another. Okay, next up, no backing boards. So here we go. Um, let's see. Oh, great. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's House of Secrets. Number 144, you know, just another old book from 1977 with an all like dark gray or black cover, just no backing board, just sitting around, no big deal. I am going to change that right now. I'm going to grade this book and get it into a proper bag and board, trying not to bend the book <laughs> as I open the bag, because that'll happen. You'll, you're like, oh, I'm just going to open it and check it out. And you end up with no backing board and the Everything starts folding and breaking colors. I'm going to be trying to be as careful as I can to get it out of this old comic book bag. Careful as possible. And let's take a look. Now, in the bag, it's got that nice NM sticker. Who knows how long this book has been just sitting around at Mile High Comics waiting for me to place that order finally. Oh, man, it smells terrible. Or great, you know, depending on what kind of smells you like, I guess. <laughs> uh, but... Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. So when you're looking at something like uh, quality comics on Hip Comic, the backs of these books don't look like this. Um, this is, you know, very, very lightly discolored or dirty there. That would come off very easily with a light dry cleaning. Uh, really no foxing whatsoever. The back looks great. Corners are not in the greatest of condition, so that's going to drop it off like that. Has no shot at a 9.8. There's also some other color breaks right at the top there. So then you're probably thinking 9, 4-ish. You know, if I had to give it a quick grade, I'm probably thinking a 9. This corner down here has a little bit of an, oh, trouble there. Just some color breaking and folding over. And then one last little chip right off the bottom there. Other than those, I, I would definitely consider this to be a high-grade copy. I mean, it looks really, really super strong. The colors look great. It still has a lot of the gloss. You know, is it a 9.2? Mm, I don't know. Is it an 8.5? I don't think it's an 8.5. I, I really, really feel like it's probably a 9. Maybe it's an 8.5 because of a little bit of dirt on the back. But what I find with looking at some of the slabs that I've been picking up, there there is an allowance. Uh, you know, if, if you're going to move off the 9.8, it's not that the, the, the creasing or damage or dirt, if you will, from what I can tell on the back cover, it, it's not like it takes it from a 9.8 to an 8.5 or an 8. It usually just allows for those sorts of things to be lumped in with the other defects that would keep the book in the 9.2, 9.4 range. So I'd prefer to be on the safe side and call this a 9. And I'll look at it in a little bit more detail later, but I think that's a pretty fair grade for a quick assessment. Trying to see if there's anything else I can see on the spine. I th think there's one spine tick there. One little, uh, call it like a color chip. Like just a tiny, tiny like square, almost like a pixel is has been removed. Another hairline tick. So the spine is really, really strong there. 
Really nice, really nice. It's just that the corners, uh, a couple of chips, one on the top, one on the bottom, uh, and then two more here, plus the corner. You know, you're talking about four, five, six, maybe defects. That's why I'm thinking the 9.0, but I have some 9.0 slab where the spine is in worse shape, but I think just the corners are gonna make it kind of rough on that. So I, th I think a 9.0 is very, very fair for a book like this. House of Secrets number 144. I'm trying to very slowly look into Bronze Age DC horror. And this great cover by Ernie Chan is exactly what I'm looking for. And just so I don't forget, I'm going to go ahead and grade it. I got these fullbacks off of eBay, and I'm used to them being kind of like a cream color on both sides. And these look like cardboard on the back, but they're still the solid fullbacks that I like on one side, but not used to the... I, I don't like having the inconsistent comic book supplies, but in this case, these have been really becoming way more costly. Uh, they, these used to be roughly about 50 cents a piece, and now they're probably close to a dollar each. But for me, they're essential for books like this because especially with that darker background, I don't want this book to slide around or bend at all when I put it in my short box. So I think it's, it's critical to have these books, these older books, or if I have any sort of retailer incentives, I splurge and use the... All right, so much, much better, I think, than in that, that flimsy old gray Mile High Comics bag with the near mint sticker. That looks amazing. Looks super, super nice. So really excited. I got my first Bronze Age horror book, that House of Mystery book, where I got the CGC 8.5, and now I have a raw copy of House of Secrets 144. And the last book I picked up from Mile High, you could argue this is a DC horror book. This is Swamp Thing number 11. I think when you say DC Bronze Age horror, I think of House of Mystery, House of Secrets. I think of Ghosts and a couple of other titles. But also I think Swamp Thing has to be in the conversation. And I love this cover by Luis Dominguez. So let's check out the condition of this before we move on to the order analysis. At least it did come with the backing board. So look at the back real quick. Again, it does not have any staining, foxing, weird discoloration, uh, really, really solid, strong copy. Here's what the spine looks like. You know, again, just non-color breaking ticks that could come out with, you know, just a little bit of humidity and a press. I think then we're good to go. Maybe tack iron if needed, but I think that that would be excessive. Uh, if, if anything else, just maybe just something quick to smooth out the spine. Just a little bit of something here. Um, so it's either a little bit of foxing or some remnants of ketchup, somebody eating a hot dog while reading it, who knows. Uh, here is the front cover. Again, first glance, I don't see, there's no writing, uh, no other discoloration. The only thing I see is that just a massive finger bend, almost like the Swamp Thing himself put this book into the bag and board originally. You can see right there, it's right up here above the W. So that would definitely need to be pressed out. But again, the spine looks very, very good. Very good. Just very impressed with that. I'll, just as I move it back and forth in the light, you're just picking up a small handful of tiny non-color breaking ticks. But nothing really breaks color that I can see. There's no chipping. The corners are strong. I hate to say that this could be bumped all the way to 9.8. But I mean, even if we're thinking worst case 9.4, uh, here's something else that I would have to think about, and I'm hoping this doesn't break color. I just noticed there's a bit of a dog ear here, some remnants of a crease right there, but it's just creased. Like even in the dark blue, right up there, if I can get on there, the dark blue, as I move the light over, it's just creased, but you can see it's still, the blue is solid, it's completely intact. So as is, for me, because it has that really, really solid crease, uh, the giant finger bend, the Swamp Thing finger bend, you know, it's probably, again, somewhere in the nines, maybe nine, nine, two. Like, I would say it's, this book is so good, it's probably a nine, two with the possibility of a press, maybe a light clean. But man, if I could get that crease out along with the finger bend, this could be a nine, six. Uh, so I'm just super, super pleased, uh, very impressed with uh, these being, is it is it near mint or ne mint as, as Mile High labels it? I think so. I think this qualifies. Uh, it's just amazing. It's a 20 cent cover from 1974 that 
is in this sort of condition, I'm just, I'm very, very happy with this. So I want now to see, okay, based on what I paid for these, I think my general happiness certainly is uh, looking at the, the age of the books and the condition. I think I got really lucky with this order that all of these books are in high grade. But does that really matter when we're looking at value? Do these books have value in the grades that I think they are? Let's find out. All right, here is that order that I placed with Mile High Comics on December 31st, 2022. I was invoiced $108.80. I did not have to pay shipping. There was no tax. I just had to pay $4 in insurance. And then what I end up doing is taking that $4 and distributing it across the six books in this order. So that if I'm looking at my total cost here in column Z, I see that my math is right and it adds up to $108.80. Now, if I'm comparing the cost of these books against the fair market value provided by cover price, You'll see that it's positive. Uh, most of the time from Mile High Comics, it's it's typically ne negative because most of my orders from Mile High Comics, the raw value assessment is negative just because I am paying a premium to get the books in high grade, which that's what I'm all about. So I don't mind doing that. But in this case, it's actually a positive value. The one that took the biggest hit here was Swamp Thing 11. Cover Price is reporting that book as being worth $20 raw and I paid $39.87 to get the book in the condition that I did, but that's a loss of $19.87 if I plan on just keeping the book raw. Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur also was considered a loss. I paid $18.27 to acquire that book. According to cover price, it is $10. The big winner here is Fantastic Four 204. Cover price is reporting that book as being worth $55 raw, Again, my voice kind of changes because it's kind of a question mark. Like, is that true cover price? I'm just continuing to use that source because I feel like it's kind of the only game in town, but I may need to start pulling that number apart and really just maybe considering a range of values instead of one hard number because I just feel like they're all over the place now with their fair market values for raw books. So I'm not really completely trusting that number. But that is what the data is saying right now, so I'm going to go with it. I paid $20.27 to get Fantastic Four 204 in that condition that, again, I think if I'm just guessing and I'm being super, super conservative, it's probably a 9 or 9.2, but it could also be a 9.6 candidate or even a 9.8, potentially, hopefully. So those are the raw values for the six books, but what if I were to get them graded? As I've been told many times by the most professional speculators and influencers on the market near mint means 9.4 so if i were to give each of these books an official 9.4 what kind of value do they have if i were to send these books off for grading and you would see that if i didn't do a thing with them and hope that they all came back 9.4 i would stand to lose 10 bucks uh, and that's mainly because daredevil 53 and a 9.4 has a cgc value of four dollars I don't even know how it has a value of $4. Like, it, did it sell at auction and somebody bid $4 and one? I, I don't know. I assume so. Fantastic Four 204. I think that's a, a great book, but only worth $48 in a 9.4. So after the cost to acquire the book, plus CGC fees and shipping to get it to Florida, I would end up losing five bucks. House of Secrets, as great as that book is, or as great a book that I think it is, I should say, House of Secrets 144 and a 9.4 is only worth 20 bucks. And that is something I think you have to be careful when you're getting into these sort of niche titles or series. And the thing I'm learning is not every book is great. Not every book is important. There are specific books, specific covers, specific cover artists that people collect. And then there are the rest of the books. So this could be one of those where it's just sort of in the pile of the rest of the books. But I just felt like the cover being designed the way that it is for the age of the book and me only paying $13.07 to acquire it, I figured it was worth a shot. But you could see if that book came back a 9.4 from CGC, it wouldn't even be worth grading because I would lose $25.75. Now the big winner here that I think is surprising to me is not Swamp Thing 11. Swamp Thing 11, although it does have value in a CGC at 76.33, I paid so much for it from Mile High that if I were to get it back as a 9.4, it's kind of a break-even situation in terms of a value add. 
but Wonder Woman 118 worth $99 and a 9.4. Again, kind of a head scratcher there a little bit. I paid $11.47 to acquire that book. It has a raw value of 29 and it has the potential to be a value add of 54.85 that's really carrying this order if these books were to come back in a 9.4. Now, what I always like to do for fun is see what is the ceiling, what is the max value for these books in a 9.8, just so I can see the kind of books that I'm dealing with here. And lo and behold, Swamp Think 11 takes the lead as that book in a 9.8 has a CGC value of $480 more than half of the overall value of the order potentially being $801.42. Now, again, I don't expect all of these books to be a 9.8. They're certainly not. I know for sure I see some color breaks on some of these books, but there are some 9.8 candidates, I think, in this order, but really good value here. Daredevil 53 jumps over 100 bucks to 111. Same thing, Fantastic Four 204, only 115.67. I think that that's a little bit of a hidden gem. House of Secrets, surprisingly, in a 9.8 is under $100. And maybe it's surprising to me because I'm just starting my education on those types of books. And I just assume that a 9.8, they're all two or 300, but that's not the case here. It's only 95. Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, the speculation has crashed hard on that as most overhyped and overspeculated books have over the past year. 89.67 for that book in a 9.8. And there it is again, Wonder Woman 118 at $215. I think that's a really, really good gamble uh, investment where I paid $11.47 to acquire that book. So a lot of major, major potential there in that Wonder Woman 118. So it is definitely kind of an odd situation, right? You're, you're kind of getting in the time machine when you deal with Mile High Comics in terms of certainly the website, the ordering process, and so on, as if it was one of the first sites ever built when the internet was finally uh, publicly established. But then you look at the prices, and the prices are, I don't even know what year the prices are from. They're, they're so insanely high. What I try to do is figure out the, the middle, like I'll, I'll play the middle, I'll, I'll try and find the safe picks, I'll try and find the value picks, I'll try and find books that I'm willing to pay more for, but only if the risk is low. And I mean, if, if you think back at the 9.4 numbers that I showed where it was a loss of $10, to me, that's a, a very, very low risk gamble because they're not all going to be 9.4, it's just like they're all not going to be 9.8s. There's probably a 9.6 somewhere in there. There's probably a 9.0 somewhere in there. I think we went through that when I was grading some of the books. But there are times where I feel like participating in auctions. There are times where I don't want any risk on condition and I want to buy the book in a specific grade, slabbed, professionally graded. And then there are times where I want to gamble on the condition. And I talk about this with these mile high orders. It's really a condition mystery box where it's like you know the books that you're getting but you don't know exactly what condition they're going to be in they're just going to be high grade one of them could be a 9.8 one of them could be a 9 you don't know is it worth the gamble and I think when I run the numbers and I do the evaluations and I look at the average grade of the comics that I'm getting from mile high in terms of condition and I think that I've assessed the risk properly I think it's worth it thanks for watching happy collecting and see you next time